What's up, sons? It's Blindrod with Cybertech once again, and I know there's a ton of coverage going on right now. So basically what I'm going to be doing is comparing the specs, the listed specs on the NVIDIA websites of the new announced or newly announced RTX 2080 Ti versus the last generation GTX 1080 Ti and just giving some basic thoughts and opinions on those. So I would consider this more of a talking head video so you can throw it up in the background if you like or watch I'll try to throw some overlays and I have some charts here for you to take a look at as well without further ado let's hop into it okay so starting things off of course we should talk about the amount of CUDA cores the RTX 2080 Ti is going to have about 4,352 while the GTX 1080 Ti had 3,584. So while there is an increase there, it's not so significant that you would see something like double the performance or double the compute performance there. Next, the boost clock on the 2080 Ti Founders Edition is going to be 1,635 megahertz while on the gtx 1080 ti it was 1582 megahertz however with gpu boost it's pretty common for those to hit uh, around 1900 to 2100 depending on how lucky you got with the silicon lottery this actually does bring up a pretty interesting point because if we're going to be talking about the core clock and determining the performance based on that the out of the box 1635 megahertz doesn't appear to be something that I would expect GPU boost to push an extra hundred over what's currently on the 1080 Ti. I'm going to be honestly expecting that GPU boost range of 1900 to about 2100 depending on of course the silicon lottery there. Now of course the higher the clock the better so out of the box of course um, you, you would assume that that 1635 is going to be performing better, but because of the GPU boost technology, I don't actually think it will. And that's just my two cents on that. Moving on from there, the memory speed is 14 gigabits per second on the RTX 2080 Ti, while on the GTX 1080 Ti, it was only 11. So we're getting a whole extra three throughput there and that could be significant for mining but it also depends on how that extra bandwidth is allocated because keep in mind here we have almost an entirely new compute portion on this GPU that three could just be making up for what it's losing by adding that extra compute unit there and I guess I could call it a compute unit but basically what I'm referring to is the ray tracing module in this aspect. Now the standard memory config on both of these is going to be 11 gigabytes. However, you had GDDR5X on the 1080 Ti, while we will have the newer GDDR6, which is supposed to be significantly faster on the RTX 2080 Ti. The memory interface is going to be a 352-bit bus, just like the 1080 Ti. However, the memory bandwidth goes from 484 gigabytes a second to 616 gigabytes a second, which is pretty significant when you're talking about just general throughput. So I do already, just from the numbers, can tell you that the GDDR6 with the same bus width does appear to be performing better than the GDDR5X, so that's good news. The maximum digital resolution is the same. You're gonna have the 8K resolution, which is, you know, 7,680, which is not 8K, but that's another discussion for another time. And our standard display connectors are actually, there's something new here that I caught. While on the GTX 1080 Ti, we had DisplayPort 1.4 and HDMI 2.0B, we have both of those coming on the Founders Edition 2080 Ti or the RTX 2080 Ti, but we have an added USB Type-C, which I'm super happy to see on this, especially since I've seen a lot of monitors, one of the new, I believe the 43 inch ultra wide from Samsung, which I just saw some people doing some reviews on, actually has USB-C input as well as USB-C uplink and downlink, which is awesome because in theory you could, well, do a lot of cool stuff with that. So. Uh, I, 
Sorry for the tangent, let's get back to the GPU. Here's where things get a little interesting. Once again, we have the maximum GPU temperature at 89C for the RTX 2080 Ti, while on the GTX 1080 Ti, we had a maximum GPU temperature of 91C, which means we will see this new line start to throttle two degrees Celsius earlier than it did on the previous generation for Pascal. Now, what makes this a little bit extra concerning here is that the graphics card power is going to be 10 watts over that of what the 1080 Ti was with 260 watts as opposed to the 250 watts that we saw, of course, on the 1080 Ti. And this is all done through supplementary power connectors on the 2080 Ti of an 8x8, which is an extra two pins over the 8x6 that came on the GTX 1080 Ti Founders Edition. Of course, a lot of those got upgraded on the later third-party models. So that doesn't really cover everything. That's all of the specs. But if we start talking about what the GTX 1080 Ti did compared to what the RTX 2080 Ti is aiming to do, we start seeing why we're not getting a huge improvement in actual performance. So the things I'm talking about here is the improvement in the clock speeds, amount of CUDA cores, as well as the memory bandwidth. This is all just incremental improvements and we're talking about 10 to 15% improvements which would be more along the lines of what we would expect from something like Intel before they had to deal with Ryzen. And this could also be due largely to the fact that there is no competition in the high-end 1080 Ti, 2080 Ti range from any of its competitors. So that could be part of the problem there. So what are they trying to do? I think what they're trying to do at this point is take that opportunity and capitalize on it by researching and coming out with a technology that in the past we couldn't do, and that's the ray tracing. So they talked a lot about ray tracing, and as a video game nerd, it looks awesome. So don't get me wrong with any of that. What I'm talking about is the raw GPU uh, horsepower here not actually being as big of a leap as it was previously from Maxwell to Pascal. So I think that if you're going to talk about running some of the older games that don't support the RTX technology, so the ones that they mentioned was like the Battlefield 5 and of course the new Shadow of the Tomb Raider and so on and so forth, the new game that's coming out from the studio from Alan Wake which looks awesome. Uh, if you're not talking about those games that are optimized to use the ray tracing, you are talking about an incremental improvement. And so I think if you have a 1080 Ti right now and the primary titles you're playing are esports titles and you're looking at playing, you know, uh, PUBG, Fortnite, so on and so forth, this might not be the GPU you're looking for. However, if you like to stay on the cutting edge of technology and you want to see what ray tracing is all about, it will be the only option that you have. And that is going to be or play a big factor. What this is turning into, though, is Sega does what Nintendo don't. And we all know how that worked out. Either way, I'll get one in and test it and try to validate all of my assumptions on this by testing some of the older games against the GTX 1080 Ti. The GPU launch is set for about September 20th, and you can pre-order now if you can get the page to load. So good luck on that. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe down below. Let me know what you guys think about the new RTX. I'm definitely excited for ray tracing. I'm just a little scared that it might be a little anti-competitive. Let me know what you guys think, like I said, in the comments. Otherwise, I'll see you next Tuesday.